Hello everyone and welcome to the Mass and Drum Whiskey Room. I am Jason C and today we have a challenge video that was started by some dude on Reddit claiming you only need to have five whiskeys the rest of your life. Now the Bourbon Junkies nominated ADHD Whiskey who nominated Primetime Michael Klein over at Destination Bourbon who then nominated Shayla at Whiskey Central who then nominated me. So now it is my turn. So here are the selections that I need to choose for my five whiskeys to have the rest of my life which sounds completely sad <laughs> but that's the challenge so the first one I got to pick is my daily drinker the second one has to be one to impress my guests uh, the third one needs to be a mixer the fourth one is supposed to be my Friday night pour after a long week of work and my last bottle is for special occasions I have a mix of some good and available whiskeys as well as a couple of hitters in there uh, to round out my choices so here we go First is my everyday sipper, and my choice of Wild Turkey 101 should actually surprise nobody. I love this stuff. It's a blend of six, seven, and eight year old bourbons. Sometimes they even blend some older stuff in there. It's affordable, it's available, and I would be proud to drink this the rest of my days as an everyday sipper. This bourbon always does well in blind tastings and usually defeats bourbons that are sometimes twice its price point. I can't really think of a better bourbon on the shelf that's less than 25 bucks. So next up, what am I impressing my friends with? Old Fitzgerald Bottled in Bond. Even now when I take this beautiful bottle out to friends or family, it usually gets an O oh or an ah or a wow, look at that bottle. That is some fancy, that's some fancy bourbon you got there. <laughs> it's a beautiful bottle that is always impressive. Particularly, uh, I would probably choose the 15 year. I love the 15 year old one. It's a perfect mix of butterscotch oak, some of that really good Heaven Hill weeded bourbon notes that you really get, those classic notes. Um, these release a few times a year uh, with different ages and they retail for about $10 per year the bourbon is aged. So the 15 year was 150 bucks. All right, wait, I gotta get my, uh, my next one up. This is my mixer right here, guys. Uh, this one actually for me is pretty easy. Old Forest Rye for a few reasons. One, it's only about 23 bucks. Two, it works amazingly well in both traditional bourbon and rye based cocktails. And three, it also sips really well neat. Its unique high barley mash bill gives this rye a floral and citrus, uh, citrusy quality that I love in cocktails. It's an absolute steal for the price and when I can mix and I feel like this one, because it's such a good high quality rye, I can also sip it neat in case I'm in the mood for, you know, a nice rye whiskey on those cold nights. Next up is my Friday night pour. After a long week of work, I want something with some high proof to it, something that I could sip on all night, feel nice and warm and fuzzy inside, and just relax. That bottle is Elijah Craig Barrel Proof. These release about three times a year, and even though each batch can defer in flavor a bit, for the most part, they are all delicious. This is 12 years old, it's barrel proof, it's uncut, it's unfiltered, it retails for about 65 bucks, and it's an absolute beast of a bourbon. Tons of flavor, tons of viscosity, and the perfect dram, the perfect bourbon after a long week of work. Uh, and last and certainly not least, my special occasion pour. My special occasion pour has to be William LaRue Weller from Buffalo Trace Antique Collection. More so than any other bottle in that hard to find lineup, William LaRue Weller time and time again proves to be my favorite of the lineup every year and usually the most consistent. The sweetness of the weeded bourbon combined with the high proof and higher age make this one one of the most perfectly balanced bourbons on my shelf. This is still one of, if not my favorite bourbon of all time. I've had older bottlings of this, newer ones, and this it just kicks ass every single time. This I know it's hard to get, it's a pain in the ass. I give Buffalo Trace a lot of flack for their stuff being really hard to find and allocated and obviously jacked up on the secondary market. but. William Lou Weller is one of those bottles that if I do see a little bit over retail or, you know, even a hundred or a couple hundred over retail, I still might pull the trigger on it. It's that good. That's why it's my special occasion pour. This bourbon always makes an amazing impression on myself and whoever I let try it. 
All right, well, I want to thank Shayla from Whiskey Central for nominating me and to all the other channels for getting involved with such a fun list to make. I guess I should thank the dude from Reddit for coming up with the idea as well. So thanks to whoever you are. Uh, but check out the other videos from each channel below to see what their selections were. Uh, make sure you subscribe to them and definitely check them out. Next up, I have to keep these videos a rolling, so I have to nominate the next person, and I'm going to nominate Matt from Whiskey Crusaders. That dude has about four gajillion bottles, and I would love to see him even just try to pick out five to have the rest of his life, so it should be pretty entertaining. All right, guys, well, I hope you enjoyed this video for you only need five whiskeys the rest of your life. <laughs> hope you enjoyed it. If you did, hit the subscribe button below. Please hit that like button. Uh, if you haven't yet, follow me on Instagram, follow me on Twitter. Let me know what your five selections would be in those uh, specific categories. Always love talking to you guys. And as I always say, it's not about the whiskey. It's the people you share it with. So cheers, and I'll see you next time on The Mash and Drum.